This particular car was low on refrigerant. I've had this thing for about four years and it finally got to the point where the compressor was kicking in and out and it wasn't cooling as effectively as it should. Today I'm gonna to show you what the normal operating pressure should be for a vehicle that is using an air conditioning system that runs on R134A. Some of the newer vehicles don't use this, so make sure you're verifying that you actually have an R134A vehicle before trying to apply these pressures. Watch the end of the video if you wanna see me actually charging this thing. I'll show you what we're, what we're measuring at the moment. So what we did is we took a look at the type of refrigerant that's in here. You can see right there it says R134A and then right there it shows us how many ounces the system holds. So this system holds almost exactly two pounds of R134A and that's an important thing to pay attention to because you never ever would want to overcharge a system and I'm going to show you how you prevent doing that. What it really comes down to is having some gauges that you can actually look at the pressures of the system while it's operating. Now before I show you the connections on the vehicle and stuff, there's a couple other things that you need to know about the pressures. The first one is that you need to know what the ambient temperature is where you are located. And you can see we're parked in the shade right now and that will give us an accurate ambient temperature. So you can see on this screenshot right here that the temperature here right now is about 85 degrees. And so knowing that gives us an important data point to understand the pressures better. The second thing is that on your climate control inside of the vehicle, you want to make sure that you have recirculation turned off. You do not want the air to recirculate inside of the car. That's basically going to give you a false ambient temperature because it's going to be taking the cool air from the vehicle and running that across the evaporator instead of the outside air. So you want just regular air conditioning turned on and you want it set to the maximum fan speed of four or whatever it happens to be with your vehicle. Now you can use this chart right here. Now depending on if it's 70 or 75 or 80 or 85 degrees or 90 or, or even hotter, you can see that we've got some pressure ranges that your vehicle should be operating in. And you can see that with the ambient temperature of 85 degrees, we should be operating somewhere around 45 to 55 PSI on the low side and 225 to 250 on the high side. Uh, right here, this is the low side connection. The nice thing about air conditioning with vehicles is that they have these quick connect fittings, which is uh, different than the HVAC industry where you have a, just a straighter connection that you have to thread on. So you can see I've got the low side over here and the high side over there. The other really cool thing is that you can't mix those up because the physical connector is different on the top so you can't actually connect them to the wrong one. You can see on our low side here, we are currently operating at about 52 PSI. Now this gauge uh, has seen better days. As you can see, it's kind of damaged, so we might be a little bit off there, but we're close to 55 PSI, which would be the upper range of what we would want uh, for this particular temperature. And you can see we're really close to 225 on the high side, so it's possible that maybe it's a little bit cooler where we're parked, but we're just about perfect for the charge on this particular vehicle right now after I did add uh, refrigerant to it. Now, if you don't have a can of R134A like what you're seeing right here, you can actually use adapters from those small cans and still use them in combination with your gauges. So I'll link to those down below in case you wanna buy some small cans of R134A and still connect them through a regular set of gauges so you can make sure that you're monitoring the pressure as you're adding refrigerant to your system. If you're adding refrigerant to your vehicle, you obviously know you have some kind of a refrigerant leak happening somewhere. I'm just gonna give you my two cents on what you should do about that. Uh, firstly, if you have a super, super slow leak like what this is, where it took four years for it to be a noticeable issue, probably adding is gonna be your best option because it's really hard to find a leak that is really, really slow like that. However, if you have a leak that is a lot worse than that and you're actually losing a significant amount of refrigerant where you have to recharge it every year, you're probably gonna wanna go ahead and find that leak. Now, personally, the way that I like to do that is using an electronic refrigerant sniffing tool and going around and finding the leak with that. You can get dye kits to put dye into the system. Personally, I've never really liked that method very much. I'm not opposed to it, it probably is fine, but I don't like putting uh, things into the system that weren't designed to go in there. I like to go with regular R134A and the oil that is rated to go in the system. I don't like to put stop leak in there. I don't like to put any other additives or stuff into the system, I would much rather find and actually fix the leak rather than to use some of those uh, shortcuts. But comment down below, let me know what your experience is. I don't work on automotive uh, refrigeration nearly as much as commercial refrigeration. So I know there's a huge 
variants and opinions out there and I respect them. If you have a lot of experience, feel free to share it. So at this point now we can flip it into max AC mode. So I have max AC turned on in there right now. It's recirculating the cool air in the vehicle. And you can see that our pressure has dropped all the way from uh, 50, 53 or whatever it was before down to 40. And so that would make you think that you potentially need to add refrigerant because it's 85 degrees outside right now. And based on the chart, we would need to add some, but that's not correct. Since we have recirculation turned on, it's using a lower ambient temperature inside of the vehicle. So just to point out exactly what I was talking about with that issue, uh, you definitely want to make sure rear circulation is turned off when you are charging the vehicle. In my experience, if you have a vehicle that is noticeably not cooling, but it is cooling a little bit, uh, then you are most likely almost completely out of refrigerant. You're, it mostly is gone. So I can pretty confidently uh, go ahead and say that I would probably lean towards putting in two thirds or maybe even three quarters of the nameplate charge. I actually put even a little bit more than that in this particular vehicle, close to the nameplate charge. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, our pressures were saying that that was fine. We were monitoring the high and low side pressures while we were doing that. And the second reason is I know it has a very slow leak. So if it's an ounce or two over, it's not gonna hurt the vehicle, or at least it shouldn't hurt the vehicle. Overcharging is really a bummer because once you've charged the system, you can't just release R134A into the atmosphere. Uh, it needs to be recovered into a recovery cylinder. So just keep that in mind. Be careful not to overcharge your vehicle. A couple other things related to the pressures that you should be aware of is if you have a low side pressure that's about right, but the high side is super high, you might have a couple different issues going on probably with the actual system where your capillary tube or your regulating device is potentially clogged. Other things to look for are a blocked condensing coil. So you wanna make sure that that's nice and clean before you go adjusting pressures and that your air filter inside of the cab is also clean and new and you have good airflow coming through. Because if you start adjusting pressures without a clean condensing coil and a clean air filter or, um, or evaporator coil in the vehicle, you can cause significant problems uh, if you don't pay attention to those things first. So you always wanna check the simple stuff first before you go adding refrigerant to a system. Also having a set of gauges so that you can actually see the high side pressure and the low side pressure is really important to be able to know if the thing is actually broken or if it's actually fine. So I'll link down in the description to gauges that you can get, they're very affordable. So pick some of those up and you will be really glad that you did because you'll be able to actually tell what in the world is going on with your vehicle instead of just taking a wild guess with a cheap can of R134A and uh, no way to tell exactly what's going on. Sometimes you can get by with that, sometimes you can't. If this video helped you fix your air conditioner on your vehicle, if you wanna return the favor, you can use the affiliate links in the description to purchase a set of gauges or something that you needed. That will help out the channel. The other thing you can do is just smash the thumbs up button and comment down below. That helps the YouTube algorithm to push this video out to more people. The main thing is to add refrigerant nice and slow. You don't wanna overload the system. See what our charge is at? We're at three ounces in so far. We'll stop once we get to eight ounces and see what the pressures are. All right, we have made it to eight ounces. You can hear all the compressors running continuously now. All right, we ended up going up a little bit over a pound. We got one pound, six ounces or so. We turn off this valve, and then we can add the remainder of uh, refrigerant that's in that hose right there. There we go. Wait for that pressure to come back down. And we'll know that all the liquid has been added that was in that hose. Looks like we're done. And just like that, we are good to go for hopefully another several years. All right, thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. See ya.